righty. Last week we talked about the difference between being busy and being productive because everybody seems to have no time, right? Everyone's busy. Everyone's rushing. Everyone's going from one thing to the next. But it's really about making sure that we are spending our time in the most productive way possible, that we're making the most of the time that we have in order to be able to move our businesses forward in in the way that we want to. It's easy to be busy. Anyone can be busy all day, every day. Um, And perhaps if you are being busy for the sake of being busy, then that's a really good topic to take to your um, therapist next time (laughs) that you book in um, for therapy, because some of us, you know, have grown up with the notion that busy equals success. I know that was definitely something that was taught to me when I was younger and took a lot of kind of breaking down for me to figure out, okay, what was that about? Um, Because the most successful people I could see in my world were busy and were stressed and were constantly on the go. And I thought that's what, you know, that's what I needed to do too. Um, So perhaps you need to unpack that yourself. Perhaps you listened to last week's episode and thought, oh, that's me. I can, I can feel myself in that. Um, But it's also about understanding how much your time is worth. It's about um, prioritizing tasks that that deserve your attention. And so we talked about the tangents. We talked about the quadrants, being able to identify things that are urgent and important, um, those that are not urgent or important, and um, the other two in between so that you can prioritize those things that are really important to you. So if you haven't checked in on last week's episode, please do. Um, What we're going to talk about today is working in your zone of genius. So once you've done the quadrant and there are things that are urgent and important, if there are things in that urgent and important quadrant that you keep putting off, even though they are urgent and important, and you've identified that they are both urgent and important, then there's something bigger at play here. And perhaps it is that those things in that quadrant are not part of your zone of genius. They are not things that light you up. They are not, um, you know, things that really get you going. And when we first start our businesses, we are happy to do anything, right? We will do, you know, we will do the books, we will clean the toilets, we will scrub the floors, we will, you know, do the customer acquisition, we will onboard staff, we will do all of the things that, you know, sometimes till one o'clock in the morning because we're running on passion, we're running on adrenaline, everything seems exciting, but that only lasts for so long. And once that kind of sheen has worn off, it's really important to be able to figure out where you deserve to put your attention. And typically where you deserve to put your attention is going to be where you're going to be the most productive, where you're going to get the most bang for your buck. So your time is valuable. And if you have certain things that you are good at in your business that fall into your zone of genius, then you should be spending time on those. You really should be focusing in on getting those things done because you're probably going to be the person in the organization that A, does them the best, but B, also does them the fastest. And some things in your organization you're not going to be the best at and you're not going to be the fastest at. And I've told the story a hundred times, but you know that I used to do all of the books and all of the wages myself in my business. And it would take me a hundred thousand hours to do, but I thought that that was cheaper than paying an expert to do it. Someone who could have done it in three hours and and that would have been that. So I really learned my lesson, which is why I talk about it so often, because I really learned my lesson there in terms of where my time is best spent and it is not best spent um, it is really not best spent doing the accounting or working in other areas that are, are not my zone of genius. So what is your zone of genius? What are the things that do you do that light you up? And perhaps you want to pause this episode here and, and just have a think about what those things are. Perhaps you've got your phone on you. You can write in the notes part of your phone. Perhaps you're driving and you can't stop. Please don't be on your phone whilst you're driving. But um, I really want you to have a think about those things that you're really good at, those things that you can do perhaps more easily than other people, the things that roll off your tongue or that are, you know, quite easy to do. And if you have no idea, if you're kind of going, I don't know, stuff. Um, That's okay. What I want you to do over the next week is to really hone into how you're feeling when you're going through the motion of the things that you're doing in your workplace or your things that you're doing for your business. I want you to get, get a sense of what your body language is like, get a sense of what your gut feeling is like when you're doing certain things. Perhaps whilst you're clearing your inbox, your shoulders are tense and you're clenching your jaw and, you know, 
and the time is going really, really slowly. But perhaps whilst you're, um, you know, scheduling Facebook posts, you've got a smile on your face, you've got some music playing and um, you're getting through each task quite quickly. It's really important to be able to identify these things that are that are within your scope, the things that you do really well and that you can get done quite easily because these are the things that you want to focus in on and hone in on when it comes to um, your work. And then you want to be able to get rid of the things that don't um, fall into your zone of genius. Now, I'm not saying that you can run a successful business only doing things that are within your zone of genius because somebody needs to clean the toilets and somebody needs to talk to the customers. And sometimes there are things in your job that just have to be you. And there's no way around it. There's no way to automate it. There's no way to outsource it. It just has to be you. And so I really encourage you to lean into those lean into those things. And what works for me when it comes to those things, because I do have them in each of my businesses, in each of my roles, I've got those things that make me go, do I have to? <laughs> Can I outsource that? No. Um, so what I do is I like to decompartmentalize it to a certain time of the week. So if there are things that I, you know, can't stand doing, then I'll pick a time, Friday mornings, nine till 10, boom, that's when I'm reconciling the accounts. That's when I'm calling back the people who have complaints. That's when I'm, you know, insert any of the jobs that I hate here. And so I put them together or I kind of bunch them together. Perhaps I'm not doing all of those tasks at once, but perhaps all the calls I need to make happen on Friday mornings. Perhaps all of the reconciling happens on a Monday night. What are, whatever works for you. I find when uh, those things are just spread throughout my day, like it, like a little bit every day, then it just drags and it just, I just put it off and then it doesn't get done. And then people are asking why. And so learn from my mistakes, find yourself a time where you can put those things that aren't necessarily in your zone of genius. And then you can have great, full productive days where you are just working in your zone of genius and you can feel really good about it. Like Wednesdays, today's Wednesday. And I love Wednesdays because Wednesdays are just all about working in my zone of genius. And those other things can wait. <laughs> they can wait till Friday morning. Um, so I encourage you to think about not just identifying what those things are, but also identifying a time where you can take the things that are perhaps not your cup of tea and put them all, you know, onto the one time slot that you have something amazing to look forward to after. Friday mornings for me is that stuff. And then Friday lunch times are the times when I go out to lunch. So I'll have lunch with a girlfriend. I'll have lunch with my, you know, board members. I'll have lunch. I like I do a lunch and that's always a great reward because I know I'm not going to be at my desk forever. I know I have a deadline, so I have to keep moving. I can't procrastinate. I've got to get to it. And then I reward myself by going out and, and having a glass of wine at lunch. So whatever works for you, find yourself some kind of incentive, find yourself a reward, a carrot on the end of the stick in order to be able to get those things done. And then you will have, you know, a wonderful time on the other days, knowing that you don't have to actually tackle those things. And if you haven't organized your ideal week, if you don't know what you're doing on a Friday or what you're doing on a Wednesday or how on earth you would decompartmentalize those things, then you definitely need guilt be gone. Uh, so um, that mini course, as I said in the beginning, is available now and you can do it as a self-paced version so you can work through it at your own time you can pause it and come back to things and work your way through things so that you can create that ideal week for yourself and really figure out what those things are that are within your um, zone of genius and try your very best to create a week that really plays into those strengths and plays into the things that um, you would you know, you would really like to spend your time doing and that are, are good for you and good for your business. They light you up, but they also move your business forward. Um, so that's a really important way to tackle it. We also, in Guilt Be Gone, talk about productivity hacks. We talk about the best way to use your calendar, the best way to use your to-do list, and um, it's all recorded and ready for you now. So I encourage you to go to simplystacymorgan.com to sign up. If you haven't thought about your um, zone of genius, then I hope today's the day. I hope this has been a nice prompt for you to be able to go, come on, this is this is important, not just um, for your own mental health, but also for the, the health of your business. And I'd love to know what those things are. Let me know what your zone of genius is. If you've enjoyed today's episode, take a screenshot and um, perhaps send me a little list. Just tag me on your Insta story. Um, put a screenshot up and um, I'd love to know 
if your zones of genius is other things that you're spending your time on, or perhaps this has prompted you to make a little bit of change. Um, it's the middle of the year. It's a good time for change. It's a good time to reset and recharge. So I encourage you to um, do what you need to do in order to get yourself working in your zone of genius moving forward. Next week, we're going to be talking about guilt-free outsourcing. So perhaps there are some things that are not within your zone of genius that you'd like to offload. That's what we'll be talking about next week. And I'll talk to you then. 